Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Science Faction. The only show where a scientist, a comedian, and a comedian scientist come together to discuss science. Comedically. Hello, and welcome to Science Faction's Patreon, episode 28, I Call BS. Let's get me a perfect. Yeah, let's do it. I like that positive attitude, Damien. You bring a positive no, you attitude. Don't. No, I mean, you like it because you like, just as Satan likes people to be confident that they can outsmart him. You're right. Uh, he enjoys that. Like, it yes. makes the hunt. It makes the thwarting. The, 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 the... Our good and inspirational buddy, Satan B. Johnson, who is known to help children with disabilities, and he raises a lot of fundraiser for a lot of, you know, well-meaning charities. Yeah, but it's often he's the one who caused the disabilities. Like, he's a, there's a little, he has a little hand in it. Oh, dear. He started that youth boxing league. <laughs> oh, hey, Damien, guess what? I got a little bit further on the whole uh, getting our, our studio back up and running thing. That looks like that's on track to, to get going. We'll be, uh, be sharing some studio space with uh, another couple of comedians. And I'm really excited because that also means we can finally give in to our Patreons who got the highest tier and are going to be a guest host on the podcast with us we can't really do it where we're, all three of us are on the internet just same reason we can't do the scientists we tr tr tried something like it it doesn't work but once we'll be back in studio together we can then remote in the third person and so uh you know for those of you guys out there who were thinking about bumping up to the next level to be on science faction just remember you get it to go against damien and i call bs and he has lost a hundred percent of the time so i'm basically guaranteeing you and i call bs win Listen, I'm interested to see the type of questions because, like, Bobby normally can just keep me down with rules and whatnot, but I feel like a guest coming on, Bobby's going to be forced to create some new rules, and that's always fun. It's always fun to see a new rule be born. Never it's happened. It's like a Has new been. element. Letter literally never happened. People from Stanford find elements. People from Berkeley create bullshit rules. Uh, nobody from Stanford has ever found an element, uh, just like you have never won I Call BS. All right, let's move right on to I Call BS. I called. I called. I called. I called. I called. Ring, ring. I called. BS. Article number one. New research suggests that for night owls, allowing yourself to sleep in an extra hour dramatically reduces the likelihood of becoming clinically depressed. I mean, is this science or bad science? As a night owl, this is absolutely science. If you make me get up at a job at six o'clock in the morning, I will want to kill you and myself at work. There will be an on-place work shooting incident mm -hmm. at far less frequency if you just give me an extra hour. I always thought of you as more of a night bear. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, you may not know this about me, but I can turn my head 180 degrees. Automatically <laughs> puts me in a different sexual category. Fair enough. Sorry, David, this is bad science. They found the opposite. They found that for night owls, waking up an hour earlier dramatically cuts down your chance of de clinical depression. 23%, by the way, pretty substantial. And by the way, if you go down two hours, cuts it down by 40%. They're not sure exactly why. It could have to do with light exposure. You get more light if you get up earlier in the morning or just at a better or just a better alignment with society's early rising expectations, but it seems to work. We've known from tons of earlier studies that night owls are much more likely to suffer de from depression, but there's some causation correlation issues there because also people with depression can sometimes find it hard to sleep. And also we know that people with other issues and other diseases or disorders, whether they're substance abuse, disorders or pain disorders etc etc you have a also, shitty job you have a shitty yes. job and it makes me super depressed because i have i don't get to I'm, I'm tired when my kids come home from school mm -hmm. i have to be tired at night well yes and that too having a shitty job would be a good another good one all those things are kind of like confounding factors that might be you know the actual uh, original cause of it but what this study looked at as, is early risers versus night owls versus those in between. And they looked at some of the genetic predispositions that account for those differences. It found that for those who stay up late, those night owls, adjusting their sleep schedule back an hour, but not getting more sleep. So basically you go to bed an hour early and you wake up an hour early, so you're not getting any more sleep. It dramatically reduces the likelihood of depression. Now, I will say, I understand Damien's point. I also am a bit of a night owl, and I also do appreciate being able to sleep in. However, I'll say this, Damien. You ever do the thing where, for whatever reason, you got an early morning or something, and you have to take, like, a NyQuil or, or something, but you go to bed at 9.30, and you wake up early? I gotta say, on those days, I do feel great. I feel incredibly productive, because I'm up at, like, 5 in the morning getting shit done, and so, like, when it comes to 9 a.m., when most people are, are getting to work, I'm like, man, I've gotten half my day's work done. 
I, I've experienced that, but uh, uh, I don't have the same passion at my jobs as you do. So it's True. like, yeah, I did another menial task for six hours. Hell yeah. But I got started. I got less sleep and got to experience life less at night. Hell yeah. I had a hard time working as the night owl in this brothel. It's a particular <laughs> type of prostitute. Because my neck is very sore <laughs> having to do the lineup as I do it. Uh, Night Owl is the the brothel's prostitute that is able to turn their head 180 degrees and eat a live mouse. <laughs> I have some regulars who like my pellets. <laughs> I think the local college takes them as well. Article number two, for the first time in many thousands of years, 2021 will mark the first year that not a single Tasmanian devil was born on the mainland of Australia indicating the animal's likely extinction in the coming decade. David, is this science or bad science? This is bad science. Tasmanian devil's coming back. You can tell the whole island sounds like it's spinning and slobbering all over itself. <laughs> the hums of small, terrifying rodents having anvils dropped on their heads because they tried to eat a clever rabbit can be heard in the outback once again. Uh, Damien, this is bad science. So it's the opposite. For the first time in more than 3,000 years, a Tasmanian devil was born on the mainland of Australia. Again, Tasmanian devils, they used I to be native. I said bad science. Yeah. I said uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tasmanian devils are born in the best. Yes. So, okay. Yes. All right. I'm not disagreeing with you. Well, except for your tornado hypothesis. You just said it derogatorily. You didn't say it like, it wasn't like, you know, when, that, um, when you answer a question, right, the teacher would be like, very good. That's correct. Instead, you were like, I agree. I think you're reading too much into that. I think you put that, on, you put that on yourself. So indeed, and in fact, while Tasmanian devils have been running around Tasmania for uh, at least a couple thousand years, they haven't been on the mainland of Australia, we think, for about 3,000 years. They likely lost out due to competition. You know, the dingoes came in around that time and probably did some competition with them, but also just people hu overhunting them, et cetera, et cetera. They have since lived on Tasmania, hence the name Tasmanian devils. But... Now, because of some things we talked about, including that transmissible devil face cancer we have covered in depth, which is a terrifying disease and a really shitty one for those devils, the idea is we want to try and spread the uninfected devils out as much as possible. Islands, the Australian mainland, etc. Get them to places where they can have genetically distinct and separated populations that won't get the devil face cancer so we can keep the species alive. And so part of that program involves bringing devils back to the mainland of Australia. How many other species wishes they got as much attention and life-saving effort and millions of dollars as the Tasmanian devil? Like, how many other species are, are like, slowly fading? Like, every rhino is like, why not me? Those guys are assholes. Rhinos get a lot of attention, but uh, yeah, you have to factor in like the Looney Tunes thing. Like it, it's almost certainly in some way related to Taz, the Tasmanian devil and the human, uh, pro the, probably also like the misconception that like, well, at the very least we need to keep these things around because soon we'll be able to harness their windmill technology to enable to power our cars or something like that. We've talked about the Vaquita. That little yeah. porpoise that lives in Baja, yeah. that little adorable porpoise. How, like, like 20 of them functionally extinct now yeah. i mean <laughs> that's so much closer to home we could have funded that yeah it's pretty adorable too actually all right article number three a 4300 year old pyramid thought to be a war memorial was found to be mainly made of dug up human remains and drywall damien is this science or bad science i come from a long line of drywallers let me just put it that way you had a great great grandfather operating around the euphrates at that time, baby, maybe the Nile, depending upon what century we're talking about. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is science, baby. We have also were great cat callers. Did somebody go, like, I guess whatever was uh, local on that word, language, for hey, baby, or then <coughs> kissing noises? Hey, lady, how about you bring that reed skirt over here, huh? <laughs> Let me drywall that ass. I don't even know what that means. David, this is science. So this is in Syria and dates back to 4,300 years before present and has the remains of at least 30 individuals. It's basically like a, you know, they call it a quote unquote pyramid. It's a ascending mound of dirt, basically. But it's thought to be commemorating a war or a battle that happened 4,300 years ago. It's constructed of dirt. Jimson, which is, by the way, what drywall is made out of. And the you were going to tell me 
<laughs> the dug up and reburied remains of these people who have some material culture symbolizing that they are possibly an army. So basically, something happened 4,300 years ago. This group of people that seem to be segmented in ways that seem to us to indicate that they are members of an army, they died. Somebody built this thing, this monument to them, by layering dirt down and putting like a layer of dirt and then bodies, grouping them together based on some of this material culture, like, you know, i.e. rank or group, and then putting more dirt on them and burying more. Now, keep in mind, these individuals had already been buried. So they were dug up from the graves that they were put in and to be interred in this war memorial of sorts that you know, that dates back to a single event that happened back then. Very, very, very interesting stuff. Again, another one of those things where eh, the headlines for some of the, that I saw for some of this stuff was kind of nutty, but the actual story itself is really cool because it kind of tells us a tale of a time, like whether it's a day or a span of days or a span of time in which these kind of the, you know this kind of violence happened. That the tale of a craft trended down from generation to generation, craftsman to craftsman. I think that's your real story here, Mr. Scientist. Some of them are like buried with like the remains of these like horse-like equids that would draw carts and stuff that we think were part of, you know, the the, the their army and the, they're buried in their own little groups. But think about that. It tells the story of this army or this group that fought a battle that lost or won, could have been a, the, the just the people who died from the winning group and that were then probably hastily buried on the battlefield. But then somebody decided like, nah, this was important shit. We should build something to commemorate it. So they start building this kind of like mound thingy and they actually dig up the bodies of these interred people to put in the mound in this ceremonial way. So really, really interesting stuff. They died defending uh, guild sex donkeys. <laughs> they deserve the monument. <laughs> By the way, guild sex donkeys was actually the original premise of the movie Shrek, but like the, Disney just <laughs> took it in a whole different direction. Mike Myers really reworked the script. Yeah. Out of the Scottish accent, a lot yeah. of things. Yeah, I, I was originally a German accent and made more sense, so... Eddie Murphy protested the whole time. He really wanted to be a sex donkey. Uh, article number four. A mollusk nicknamed the Wandering Meatloaf has been found to have teeth made of pure plastic, likely pulled directly from the microplastic-filled ocean. Damien, is this science or bad science? This is bad science. It is not uh, a sea organism. It is the actual musician Meatloaf who has spent so much time bottom... This is Meatloaf. Meatloaf has plastic teeth. And he will do anything for love, but he won't stop bottom feeding on the fucking ocean floor. Uh, David, this is bad science. So the wandering... That's meat a thousand, right? I, did I just get a perfect? No, you missed the first answer. Idiot. And you know what? Now I'm taking away an extra point from next week because you just tried to claim a victory that was not yours. <laughs> it was a question. It was I not. Asked. It was an assertion. <laughs> 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 uh, this is indeed bad science. So the wandering meatloaf was found to have teeth made of iron. So this is a little mollusk, and it's basically like this little worm-like thing that lives on rocks near the ocean, like aquatic rocks, and it basically eats off algae and microorganisms, like scrapes it off these really tough rocks. And what we found is that the teeth it uses to do that is actually a really specific and rare iron mineral called Santa Barbarite, which I am not making up, and I imagine is an incredibly wealthy mineral that has seen oprah at least three times at the supermarket also discovered at stanford ironically this <laughs> is supposed to santa barbara though which is right there yeah it's a mineral with a great lacrosse team especially for a uc yeah a lot more hacky sack even by college standards they say the only problem with that mineral is uh way too many stds <laughs> i mined some santa barbara right and all i got was syphilis <laughs> yeah drug resistant but you still <laughs> yeah, so this this creature uses this specific type of iron. It incorporates it into its tooth structure so that it's able to really scrape at these rocks. It's basically digesting or eating down these rocks with a really hard mineral element. One we've never discovered as part of a, an or a living organism's tooth. Like that's a really interesting way to kind of incorporate something into your body in order to do your really special niche thing of chewing down on the exterior of rocks to get algae off of it just one of those really cool things where you you know discover that an animal has an almost superpower that it has integrated because it's so evolutionarily specific to what it does it only evolved santa barbarite because it couldn't evolve because it didn't have the grades to evolve into stanfordite 
it told everybody it was going to transfer into UCLA 8, but uh, <laughs> grades weren't good enough there either. I can't believe its parents let it evolve into Santa Barbara. That's actually a little, that sounds questionable. All right. Thank you, audience, for coming back for Science Faction's Patreon 28, where you learned all about how night owls can lower their risk of depression by going to bed early. How 2021 will mark the first year in almost 3,000 years that a Tasmanian devil has been born on the Australian mainland. How a 4,300-year-old war memorial was basically just a bunch of dug-up bodies and drywall. And how a mollusk got teeth of iron. Thank you so much for joining us, and come on back next week for Science Faction 564. Yeah, I'm a drywall, though. Let me just say, my uh, father worked on the Twin Towers, so I know what it was drywalled with. And let me just say, jet fuel can't melt drywall. You've been listening to Science Faction. That's not right.